Hey guys, Mr. B here. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to look at star spectra and determine what elements are inside of different stars. Um, right now, I am on a website um, called explorelearning.com and there's what's called a gizmo that we're going to use here on star spectra. Um, it's kind of like a little activity online. Um, there's a student exploration sheet as well that goes with this. And in this video, I have the link for both this website and the student sheet. Um, I don't know if you guys have to make a free student account to use this. I know that I had to make a trial account as a teacher to use it. So um, if you can't access this, then this video will just have me go through it, in which case um, you can just follow along that way. So um, I'm gonna take a look at the sheet here. So here's the sheet, oh, what it looks like, it's a PDF. Um, I'm using something called Kami which is a Chrome extension so that I can type on this. But um, we're gonna go through this worksheet together and learn how Spectra work. Uh, and throughout the video, there'll be times where I will ask you to maybe pause the video, try answering the questions before I do it and see if you can get the right answer. So, okay, so it says prior knowledge questions, do these before using the gizmo. So first question says, what happens when light goes through a prism? Uh, in case you don't know what a prism is, it's like a little piece of glass or quartz. Usually it's like a triangle. Um, and when light goes through it, a lot of times it breaks apart into a rainbow. So I have a lot of images here of prisms and light on Google. Um, you might be familiar with this effect. Usually when light goes through like your window in the summertime, it might like make a rainbow on your carpet or maybe like a rainbow on the wall or something. Um, white light gets broken apart by a prism or by glass and it breaks apart into all the colors of the rainbow. So um, I'm going to answer this question here. What happens when light goes through a prism? It makes a rainbow. It says this band of colors is called a spectrum. All right, we're going to use that word quite a bit. Uh, number two, a rainbow is an example of a spectrum. What is the sequence of colors in a rainbow? Um, so I know Roy G. Biv, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So um, if you don't know the orders of the rainbow, you could Google it, but most of you probably know that. So, okay, um, so it looks like there's a warm up here. We're probably gonna be using the gizmo for this. So it says, the interior of a star produces a continuous stream of light like a rainbow. Cooler gases in the outer layers of the star absorb certain wavelengths of light, causing dark lines to appear in the spectrum. The resulting absorption spectrum can tell astronomers a great deal about the star. All right, so number one, it says on the star spectra gizmo, turn on show labels. All right, so we're gonna go to the gizmo here. Uh, I'm gonna hit launch. <clears throat> okay, so here it is. And I'm gonna click on show labels. So it looks like it numbers all these things for us. Um, and it says select star one to see its absorption spectrum. All right, so let's click on star one. Looks like some light is going through this prism and we get this spectrum, which is a rainbow. There's all these black lines on it. These are called absorption lines. Um, how many lines do you see in the spectrum? All right, so we can pause the video here and you can count. And if I count, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten lines, ten lines. Um, number two, drag the hydrogen spectrum next to the star spectrum so that the edges line up. Do some of the lines on the two spectra match up? All right, so I'm gonna drag the hydrogen over here and we're gonna line them up. Again, pause the video and do you see, do any of the lines match up? Okay, so yes, they do. Uh, number three, drag the helium spectrum next to the star spectrum, do some lines match up? All right, so let's grab the helium one, which is this one underneath here, and do any of these lines match up? So we're gonna pause video. Okay, yes, they do. So we'll also say uh, yes. Number four, try out the other available spectra. Do any others have lines that match? All right, so let's drag out all the other ones. So here's sodium. Do we see any lines that match up? Okay, here's magnesium. Do we see any lines that match up? Here's calcium. Do we see any lines that match up? And here's iron. Do we see any lines that match up? Okay, so based on all that, I would say no. No other ones line up. 
Number five, which elements have contributed to the spectrum of star one? All right, so hydrogen, if we bring it over, it looks like it matches up really well. These lines here look good. And then these ones, which aren't matching up, if we drag helium over, we see that those lines then match up. So that, that accounts for all the black lines. So the two elements that are in here are going to be hydrogen and helium. So hydrogen and helium make up the uh, two star, uh, the two elements in that. All right, so we are going to scroll down here and go on to the first part of the activity. Um, and there's a second part to this, that'll be a second video. So um, it says, activity A, classifying stars, check that show labels is on and neutral spectra is selected. All right, so show labels is on and neutral spectra is selected. All right, so it says, late in the 19th century, Harvard astronomer Edward Pickering wanted to sort and catalog the thousands of star spectra that had been collected by the Harvard Observatory. He hired, he hired several women to do the work, paying them 25 cents a day. Wow, that's a pretty low wage. Um, the most prominent of these women was Annie Jump Cannon, who devised the classification system still used today. So it looks like there's these letters here for class, uh, O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. There's color, blue, blue, white, 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 yellow, orange, red. Prominent spectral lines, so this looks like are the different elements found in each star. So ionized helium, hydrogen, neutral helium, hydrogen, hydrogen, blah, 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 blah. And then surface temperature, uh, and these are in Kelvin, which is a different temperature scale from Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, but it's pretty easy to get into. Um, Kelvin is 273 higher than Celsius. So water freezes at zero degrees Celsius which means that in Kelvin, it would be 273 Kelvin, and water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, which means in Kelvin, it would boil at 373 Kelvin. So um, I know that it's not a, a temperature, scale you're, uh, temperature scale you're familiar with, but it's pretty easy to get into. Um, and if anything, if you don't know the Celsius scale, zero degrees is where water freezes, 100 is when it boils, um, and that's at least a good base to know to begin with. So, all right, so this is the part here we're gonna do. Uh, it says, use the gizmo to find the elements that are present in the spectra of stars one through four. All right, so we're gonna be looking at stars one, two, three, and four. Um, remember to check both the neutral spectra and the ionic spectra. All right, so we have this neutral spectra here, and if we click the ionic spectra, it brings up some different spectra we might need to look at. So we, you might have to look at both of these. Um, and it says, then use the table above to classify each star and describe its surface temperature. And it says, note, a star spectrum may not display lines of all the elements typical of its spectral class. All right, so you might need to know that there might be some elements maybe not shown in there. All right, so star number one. So let's take a look at star one, which you've already looked at, but if we click on it again, we're gonna line up all these spectra and see which ones line up. So I'm gonna go through each one kind of quickly. Um, I'll line it up, and then if you want, pause the video so you can kind of see if the lines line up, and then make note maybe on a piece of paper, um, if the lines line up for that element, because that's probably gonna be one we wanna look at. So, all right, here we go. So here's hydrogen. Here's helium. Here is sodium. Here's magnesium. Here is calcium. And here is iron. Okay, let's look at the ionic spectra. Again, pause the video when I drag the spectra over so you can check to see if any of the lines match up. So here's hydrogen. Uh, this is ionized hydrogen. Here's ionized helium. Here's ionized sodium. Here's ionized magnesium. Here's ionized calcium. And here's ionized iron. Okay, so of all of those ones, to me, it looked like um, hydrogen and neutral helium both lined up really well. Um, also ionized hydrogen. So if you look at all these ones on this list, the prominent spectral lines, um, we have neutral helium and hydrogen right here. And it doesn't say ionized hydrogen, but uh, it did say that um, 
a star spectrum may not display all the elements that it might be in here. So I think for this first one, our color is going to be um, blue, white. The elements that are in the spectrum were neutral, helium, and hydrogen. Um, the class for this one is going to be B for blue, white, and the surface temperature is going to be 11,000 to 25,000 Kelvin. Okay, and I'm getting that information from right here, okay, from this part right there. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at star two. Um, again, I'm going to line up all of the spectra for you, and then you can pause the video when I line up each one. And then when you think that you've got it, we're going to come back to here, and I want you to try to figure out which one it is, and then I'll go and I'll, uh, I'll do it as well so you can double check your work. All right, so let's take a look at star two. All right, ooh, this one's got a lot more stuff on it. Okay, so let's take a look. So here's first, here's hydrogen. So do any of those lines match up? Here's helium. Do any of those ones uh, match up? Here's sodium. Okay, now when we're looking at these, we want all of the lines to match up, so not just like some of them, okay? So there's, uh, there's magnesium. Here's calcium. And here's iron. And then for the ionic ones, here is ionic or ionized hydrogen. Here's ionized helium. Here's ionized sodium. Here's ionized magnesium. Here's ionized calcium. And here's ionized iron. Okay. So make note of which ones um, matched up for those. So for number two, I'd like you to try to figure out if you can figure out what color it would be, the elements, the class, and the surface temperature. Again, pause the video here and see if you can figure it out, and then I'm going to go over it here in one second. Okay, so for color, um, I have orange. Um, the elements found in this one, so looking at this here, there was neutral calcium, neutral iron, and neutral magnesium that all line, lined up really well. Um, none of the ionized ones um, lined up very well. So this is what I have. If you have something different from me, then uh, maybe double check the video to see if maybe uh, the lines that you had didn't line up properly. Uh, class would be K, and temperature would be 3,500 to 5,000 Kelvin. Okay, all right, so we're gonna do the same thing now for star three. Again, I'll line up all the spectra for you, pause the video when each one is lined up, and then make note of which ones have lines that line up on it. Okay, so star three is this one. All right, so not with so many lines, so this one might be a little bit easier. Okay, so start with the neutral spectra first. So here's hydrogen, we'll line that one up. Here's helium. Here is sodium. Here is magnesium. Here is calcium. And here is iron. Okay, and then for the ionic ones, here is ionized hydrogen. Here is ionized helium. Here is ionized sodium. Here is ionized magnesium. Here's ionized calcium. And lastly, here's ionized iron. Okay, so of all those ones, um, which ones do you think matched up well? Uh, again, pause the video. See if you can figure out what color, class, um, spectral lines, and temperature for, for star number three. And then I will do it here in one second. Okay, so for number three, um, for color, I got blue. For elements, um, I thought that uh, the blue one here, ionized helium and hydrogen matched up really well. Uh, class then would be O, and temperature would be greater than 25,000 Kelvin. Okay. So last one here then is star four and then this video is done and then there's one other part to this but that'll be a second video. All right, so taking a look at star four, here's our last one. 
Again, I'll line up all the spectra, pause the video, see which lines you think match up, make note of which elements maybe you think are in the star, and then we'll go fill out the chart. Okay, so first one here is, is uh, hydrogen. Then we have helium. Then we have sodium. And then we have uh, magnesium. Here we have calcium. And here we have iron. Okay. And then for the ionic ones, here is ionized hydrogen. Here is ionized helium. Here is ionized sodium. Here is ionized magnesium. Here is ionized calcium. And here is ionized iron. So, which ones do you think had lines that matched up? Again, pause the video here. See if you can figure out the color, uh, elements, class, and surface temperature for star number four. And then I will do this one in a second. All right, so for star four, uh, I thought the color was white. For the elements, if it was white, um, I thought that hydrogen, ionized sodium, and ionized calcium lined up really well. So I think it's this one here in the middle. So we have hydrogen, ionized sodium, and ionized calcium that lined up really well. The class would be A, and the temperature here for this one would be 7,500 to 11,000 Kelvin. Okay, so if you got those, good job. Um, there's gonna be one other video after this, uh, the second part of this worksheet where we take a look at some harder star spectra that have some kind of funky things going on. So go on to that one next, and if you have any questions on this one, let me know. All right, I'll see you in the next one.